is back. John Hill. Rollins is behind it, and that will be the first corner of the match. Corner to Ebony. John Hurd on the far side. Edmund has had a beautifully saved. This man is at his very best, the goalkeeper, I mean. Really superb save by this international goalkeeper. Look at Evan getting up here. Savage bounce, and he was behind it all the way. Does a lot of good to a defence when he sees a save like that, doesn't it? Ray. With Dave McPherson trying to get beautifully put away there by Beth. Robertson that was late and I think there's got to be a booking certainly going to be a booking here for that tackle rightly trying to placate everybody and William Muller all on his own well Aberdeen at the moment Robertson and foot touch there. Robertson came in there. Just touching there. Has to go back. Got a good please. One all side. Great chance for Aberdeen here. Put back and badly. Great by Rangers. The play is going on. Soon as claiming it was fouled, but I don't think it was. And Butcher's there. Well, the Rangers defence on his top flat, expecting the flag to go up, and it didn't. And there was uh, the chance for Hewitt, and he squandered that, but he really did. Marvellous chance. Flag for McPherson. No flag. Durant. Good tackling by Willie Muller again, holding this Aberdeen defence together. Roberts is after this, and the Rangers goalkeeper. Bit of a mistake, has just gone over. I think they left it to each other. By oh, there's Butcher right in on top of that. And offside given, I think. Yes. Offside. Well, they had to make up their minds to go for it, one or the other, and I think it was the, the, the fall of Roberts that caused the injury. The goalkeeper certainly recovered. Simpson, there's Durant, Munro, Black, McPherson on the run, and he gets through it and Grant the substitute getting his first touch to the ball very significantly too I think there's a booking for Sinus here and if it is he's off and this could turn out to be very dramatic indeed Look at the protest going on, but Sinus is going to be booked and he's off. Rangers for the second 
successive time at Pataudry are down to ten men. And this is the incident that gets the Rangers player manager sent off. Going in there and the referee ordering him off on a protest there as Butcher is booked. So Rangers really up against it. Still 12 minutes of this half to play. The whole of the second half with 10 men. Roberts following up. Miller will try the shot and it's well over well Willie in a very good spot and he can really let them fly you know Willie Miller but that one had too much elevation go to Rangers though Rikic Exactly five minutes remaining of the first half Well, we all expected something rather special today But not quite what is worked out There's Kuffer There's Butcher and he scored Butcher has scored for Rangers The Rangers captain thunders in the first goal of the match. Rangers reduced to ten men are in the lead. A quite magnificent header by the Englishman. Look at this. Thundered in. Giving Jim Lady no chance. It must have been an abject misery ten minutes ago when the player manager was sent off and now sending the championship. The rejoicing has started. I would suggest to them a bit prematurely the whole of the second half is to come, but Rangers are vitally in the lead. David Cooper trying to follow up and does very well with a head again. That's twice I've seen David Cooper head a ball and that is almost unique. football on a day like this Alec McLeese going forward that's not a bad ball as McKinney goes in and Aberdeen get the free kick that was a very good ball by McLeese and the kind that makes a full back have to turn and run all on the one watch and watch the roll indeed having to do that turn take off McKinney going in and a free kick, well, I thought they were both at it. So, free kick to Aberdeen. Oh, it's beyond everybody, and it's in. Edwin has got the equaliser. What each. The big central defender playing in midfield today comes in. Two minutes into injury time and pulls it back. It was a very awkward ball. A Rangers defence that looked static at first. It came back and he managed to reach round and thunder it away. This is the problem. Rangers goalkeeper having to go right across his goal. And although McPherson almost got a touch, it's one each. And there goes the halftime whistle on an extremely dramatic afternoon. 
And there is Terry Butcher, the man who gave the 10-man Rangers the lead just before half-time with a very powerful header indeed. The right kind of judgment of jump and strength and away it went. And then Rangers hanging on, waiting I think for the half-time whistle, conceding the free kick that brought the equaliser. And it wasn't just the strength and the height of Ivan that paid off there. It was his ability to turn nimbly and put it away. It's one each, and I fancy the dramatics are not ended yet for the second half to come. And there is the Rangers substitute on at the start of the second half, Jimmy Phillips. Their fairly recent signing from uh, Bolton. Very promising young lad. Initially a full-back, but I think uh, Rangers have good designs to keep him in midfield and we have lost one ball right away. It's lodged right up on the top of the stand, the officer does. Well, the way the first half went, I think it, occasionally they could have played without a ball, but we do need one for the second half. And it's on for Robert Fleck. There is Phillips. after this and I think McCoy was brought down eventually by the Aberdeen fullback McKimmy and Rangers will get the free kick so free kick to Rangers yeah they are all into that again the big men were up and that is bothering the Aberdeen defence and that is of course is why Evan is in there The Rangers goalkeeper just getting the touch, and there is Butcher. Not well out though. I'll bet. Way by Jimmy Nicholl, and not the Rangers clear down there though. They're all back in the penalty area. McKimmy coming forward. Gray. Tantalising one again, Jimmy Nicol. All Aberdeen. Playing the ball around almost like a basketball team. Oh, it's off the post. Almost there, there was a deflection. A magnificent shot by Joe Miller. And there was a deflection, the Rangers goalkeeper totally deceived by it there's no offside Hewitt Rangers under pressure again though playing Purely a defensive game, trying to perhaps strike Aberdeen on the counter-attack. Oh, that's a very good shot by the police. And well taken by the goalkeeper again. Difficult ball to take. Look at that touch just before it got to Woods. John Hewitt Bet and Roll goes in there's Gray Jimmy Nickel William Miller is there and does very well indeed and then overstruck <laughs> Rufal smile on his face sheer effort of trying to get it uh, Adam McCoyst the police McCoy's getting away just the neatest of touches is Cooper and McCoy's can't bring it down and it was Durant in fact had been screaming for the ball oh, a nice 
nice little turn there but Jimmy Nickel gets back and gets a corner I think it came off him again who was not offside I say tell you what Joe Miller was not offside a very good header there by McLeish and look at the man on the line so Miller did have the chance 20 seconds and now bet nice little dummy there as Edmund comes up and there's Roberts away with it now Cooper here's Cooper Cooper, all he wanted to do, I think, was waste time. That's all Rangers are interested in now. I think somebody has told them what the score is at Celtic Park. And we have heard that the Falkirk have beaten Celtic two goals to one. As West goes in for this, there's Durant. Malimbala. I think that will be, and then it is, the final whistle. Rangers have won the league, and on come the supporters. The supporters have broken ranks, and there is a danger of the Rangers players being swamped. The crowd have gone berserk, and it will be mayhem now, and I pity the Rangers players in there as their supporters have taken for Todd Riova. The league championship is Rangers for the first time in nine years in one of the most dramatic games I've seen it for Todd Ray. Rangers 10 men against Aberdeen's 11 and the scenes are enormous, the goalposts have gone. That was a Rangers support and they're giving us the message. And now, a full 25 minutes after the final whistle. The undisguised joy of the Rangers players and their supporters. They're going to make a full trip of the stadium in dribs and drabs, I may say. And there is Sinus with his assistant manager Walter Smith. A tragic day for him as a player in having to be sent off on the day of triumph. But as a manager, delighted. There's Roberts. The end of a dramatic and arduous season. Man, an astonishing transformation in this club. Well, really amazing scenes at the end as nine years of uh, pent up frustration of waiting to win the championship exploded and onto the field. Something like 10,000 Rangers supporters uh, ran. I must say, the scenes at the end were probably more exciting than the game, which was a terrible disappointment. A, a disappointment, I may say, to those people who thought we might see some champagne stuff. Well, it was never going to be that. The players were nervy to the point of frustration. There was no flow to the game and very negative in part. And of course, when Rangers were reduced to 10 men, it looked to me as if they were obviously going to be delighted if they could hold on at one each, which they did. Well, it's uh, an occasion now for Rangers to speak for themselves. Some of them did survive the crowd scenes. They got off the good-natured crowd. I, I, I suppose they weren't going to do Rangers players any harm. They got to the dressing room and I struggled through myself got them back out and we talked to three gentlemen who've had a big part in winning this championship starting off with Graham Sinnis. Talking about the season uh, altogether what were the, the key features of it for you? Key features, the key features were when I signed certain people i.e. Terry Butcher, Chris Woods and then after that Graham Roberts. I seen then and the way people responded 
to those players because they're winners, better professionals than, than had been at the club, and with them we'd win the league. Well, your support certainly showed that they, they, they are behind you to a man, are they not? It's an amazing Our support. support has been tremendous. The response we've had from the first game we've played this year has been tremendous. We couldn't have asked for any more than that. And at the end of the day, we've won the league for them. We've won it for supporters, we've won it for the chairman, the board of directors, right down to the Stanley who opens the door, Ibrox, every day of the week. And you have more plans. Lizzie for the, who makes the tea. You have more plans for the future as well. Yeah, it's no use us being successful one season, making a lot of money from that season, and then gaining a great deal of interest on the money that's in the bank. We have now got to go out and strengthen our squad for next season, and we will do that. So at the end of the day, watching the scenes at the end, delight for the whole club. Yeah, obviously it's a mixed bag for me. I am absolutely delighted. No doubt tomorrow. Um, when I can sit down and look at it, I'll be maybe happier than I'm showing now, but believe me, inside, I'm absolutely delighted. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd just like to thank everyone who supported us throughout the season. Thank them. Terry, you scored many a goal in your career. I wonder how you would evaluate that one today. Um, well, one of the highest, I think. Um, to actually get a bit of freedom in the box is, is, is quite unique at uh, Pitaudry. And for the headers to go in, I was probably the most amazed person in the stadium. But um, it went in and uh, it, was, it was probably uh, one of the best goals, but unfortunately um, they, they equalised. So, I mean, if we won 1-0, it would have been a fairy tale ending to, to the yeah. season. But uh, nevertheless, you know, I'm proud of the lads and I'm proud of the way that the 10 men battled in the second half. These supporters mean something to you, don't they? Yes, they do to me and um, they've, they've shown you know, how, much, how much we mean to them, of course. So... Um, I mean, it's a great bond that we have between us now, and uh, I think you know this this Rangers side. If if the chairman is uh, prepared to spend a, you know a few more pounds, I think we can strengthen it and you know become a real force in Europe, yeah. and not only Scotland. Well, you told me during the week that you would celebrate tonight. If it, if it went your way, take it you won't go back in your work. Uh, no, I should definitely celebrate. But um, it's like the uh, Skull Cup uh, final. I think uh, you've got to savour the moments and um, remember the the highs, of it, you know, because there are too many lows in the game and. Uh, after the Skull Cup, I, you know, I was a little bit uh, slow on the on the drinking stakes anyway, so I should be that way tonight, but um, I want to savour it now, and I've got all summer to savour, perhaps, and hopefully we can start again next year. When you think back to the start of the season, or even pre-season, the tail end of last season, when you made the enormous financial investment, have you did you ever wake up in the middle of the night saying, I wonder if this is going to pay off for us? No, no. I don't think that's the way I look at life. I don't think that's the way I look at this investment either. I was asked to come in here for a specific reason. The reason was that uh, business is my business and I enjoy it. And uh, what I tried to do was to put down a plan that we could work to and we could see the season through. Obviously, uh, in football or in any sport, you can't guarantee anything. That's where the question mark comes in. Has your investment paid off quicker than you thought it would? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd have settled for having a good season this year, good challenge, and have a go next year. Uh, but obviously, I'm delighted with this one. And you even have further plans for Rangers. I mean, oh, the absolutely. investment hasn't yet finished, I know. No, this is the start. The fans have given us a lot of cash this year, and uh, I think it's uh, beholding on us to invest it properly and take the club where we want it to be. That's the top in Europe. If we're Celebrating coming. tonight? Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, just the two some, though, just the way for now. Get away from it all. Oh, absolutely. David, congratulations. Can I just say one thing? Yes. I will celebrate tonight. And it's very difficult to, to drink some champagne with all the fans, but we've got a lot of fans all over the world and a lot in Scotland. And I'd just like to say, if you're watching the programme tonight, that when you're watching it, I'll have a drink, Lance, and I'll give you a toast. Rangers Football Club, Premier League, winners 1986-87. Thanks, Archie. Well, what I would consider the three major figures at Ibrook, starting off with Graeme Sooners, Terry Butcher, and at the end there, David Holmes, very sincerely thanking that amazing range of support, which has meant so much to the club in that investment, of course, that uh, he put into it uh, throughout the season. I think it's uh, an incredible achievement because when I saw Rangers at the tail end of last season, uh, they looked as if they could never win anything in the next five years, and here they are, having won two of the three domestic trophies. And they really have to be congratulated 
for that. There's been a revolution in Scottish football apart from their personal achievement. Led by a gentleman from over the border who scored his second goal of the season and none more important has he scored in his entire career. From all of us here at Pitotway, good night. <laughs>